Hey guys and welcome to another block spotlight. In this spotlight I'm going to take a look at the compression dynamo from Terminal Expansion 3 but before we get to that let's have a look at its crafting recipe. Alright, so the compression dynamo is crafted by having a little piece of redstone at the bottom here which is surrounded by tin ingots. Then we have some tin gears on the sides here, can be any ingots or gears by the way, just they have to be tin. And we have a redstone transmission coil at the top. Now the uh, thermal expansion gear is made by having some tin ingots surround a, well, an iron ingot. And the redstone transmission coil is made by having a nice silver ingot in the center and having some redstone at the ends of it. All right, so let's have a look at the compression dynamo. Now in thermal expansion 3, thermal expansion introduced a new power uh, well, power system, power uh, type uh, called redstone flux. Now these dynamos generate redstone flux and uh, I've got a nice resonant energy cell here set up. Uh, currently it has some power in there, but I'm going to show you that this will be uh, increasing uh, the amount of stored power as uh, more power is generated by the compression dynamo. So yeah, I was doing some testing earlier. There we go. No more internal fluids in there. And we have a redstone energy conduit connecting the two. You can leave that out of the equation and just connect these directly to uh, an energy cell. But uh, I like to have a uh, uh, conduit in between there. You know, just if you want to uh, remove the uh, energy cell later, you still have it connected up to the rest of the system. But whatever. So you can also connect it directly to the energy cell. All right, so internally, we'll see that the, uh, well, in the user interface, the compression dynamo has an internal buffer to store power. So it will store up to 40,000 redstone flux in here. And on the left, we have a little four bucket uh, reservoir, which will hold a liquid fuel. So the compression dynamo generates power from liquid fuels. And it also needs uh, four buckets, well, no, it doesn't need four bucks, but it has an internal buffer for four buckets of coolant. So it's sort of like the combustion engine from uh, Buildcraft and where it takes in a fuel and a coolant to generate power. All right. So let's say, and by the way, uh, let uh, I've got a, yeah, a bucket of force. I haven't really tested that, but uh, this is ethanol here from uh, forestry. And that's a liquid fuel which can be used in Buildcraft engines. Now, let's say I pour some in there. Unlike Buildcraft engines, I do have the ethanol in here, but it will not run when there's no fuel. So it won't explode uh, because it doesn't have any uh, of the coolant. It will just not run as long as it, it's only got fuel in there. All right, now uh, default coolant is water. So it's running now. It's generating 80 redstone flux per tick so you know these dynamos all all of the other dynamos as well generate eight, 80 redstone flux per tick so that's what you should expect from these and uh, it's slowly processing the coolant and the uh, the fuel now as you can see the fuel here is being processed a little bit faster than the water but there might be better coolants for you to use i'll get to that in a second. So if you want to remove this, uh, just hold shift with the crescent hammer and right click it. This is pretty much the same for any of the thermal expansion blocks, uh, including the resonant energy cell here. And let's place it back so there's nothing in there. So um, while you have water as coolant and I used ethanol as a fuel source, but uh, as you might expect, thermal expansion also provides its own uh, fuel and its own coolant and the fuel we have here is liquefacted coal now I can pour that in there as you can see we've got liquefacted coolant here and we also of course have a coolant which is called gelid cryotheum we can pour that there is in as well and now we have it generating uh, 80 redstone flux per tick once more and uh, as you can see the fuel and the uh, coolant there are uh, well they are used a lot a lot slower than the uh, the ethanol and the water was especially the coolant here the gelid cryosteum is being processed very very slowly so 
that will that will take a lot longer than water to process but it does require some work to produce so uh, let's have a quick look at how these are made so the recipe for the um, liquefacted coal is basically having some pulverized coal or coal dust or you know any form of coal that's being turned into a little pile of dust and uh, you place that in magma crucible and this will produce the liquefacted coal for you then we also have the gelat cryothium here and to make this well you need to place some cryothium dust into a magma crucible and it'll pump out uh, the gelat cryothium now the cryothium dust is made using snowball well one snowball there in the corner then some nitre or salpeter you know depending on which mods you have installed but the default is nitre from thermal expansion then you have some redstone here and finally some bliss powder now, bliss powder is made from a bliss rod and i believe these are dropped by some some sort of uh mob i'm not entirely sure about that but yeah so that's how, how those are made so keep that in mind it does take some effort it might be easier to use uh, default fuel from another mod if you have other mods installed and water all right now, uh, I quickly wanted to test if this also works with uh, force from the Dartcraft mod. But I'm not sure. Yeah, that doesn't work. So, no liquid force. All right, but yeah. So, that's it for the compression dynamo. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.